Hi, in this video I'm quickly going to show you how you can effectively utilize the resources on your system when working with SSIS packages. Now, uh, while this topic is more closely related to performance tuning, uh, what we're going to do here is focus on very specific examples on how to utilize your RAM efficiently. In order to do this, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to create uh, a package and in that package we're going to use uh, one of the options which is a cache transform. Now a cache transform is used to go ahead and perform lookups so uh, it's one of the operations that we perform uh, uh, every once in a while with SQL Server. So in this case what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use a source assistant and uh, actually just a second I've got something else going on here so let me just uh, Okay, so I'm going to use a source assistant here and uh, I'm going to select a table within my database it's called airline data and uh, it's got a number of columns in it. The airline data table contains about 4 million rows here so if I go ahead and execute this one you'll see that uh, it's got 4.14 uh, million rows. Uh, the data itself is actually fairly simple it's just uh, uh, airline information in terms of the carrier code, the ID of the airline as well as tail number of the airline and flight number of the flight. So uh, you can see that this is basically just a very narrow table and essentially I need to do lookup to get the airline primary key for this combination of uh, uh, airline information. So in order to do that what I've done is I'll create an SSIS package and I've got my source here, it's got airline data and these are the columns and then I need to use a cache transform so you'll see under other transforms I've selected cache transform and I've dragged it and dropped it. I'll then go ahead and click new and I'll say I need a new airline connection so I'll say airline123 uh, and say use a file cache click browse and I'll say airline123 when I go to columns you'll see that right now it's using the underlying data type of the table which is uh, varchar200 so dtstr is basically varchar so all these columns are varchar200 and again I need to specify the columns so I'll specify one two three, four, and five because I need to join on these five columns in order to do the lookup to fetch the primary key. So this is the uh, table and then obviously uh, when I've done this you'll notice that at the moment uh, my CPU and my RAM utilization is about 3.36 uh, GB of RAM. So let me go ahead and run this and we'll see that I've got 3.36 GB of RAM. I've got a total of about 8 gigabytes of RAM on my system and uh, we're going to go ahead and load this data and as we do that we'll encounter an error saying that enough buffers were not allocated so you can see right about 3.7 million rows uh, it uh, errors out and the specific error message that you'll see here says that a buffer failed when allocating the amount of RAM required and uh, you'll also see that the system reports 92 percent of memory utilization so this is essentially just telling me that I've run out of RAM uh, while executing this package now the fix or the solution for this is actually fairly simple. Uh, the reason why I ran out of RAM is because the underlying data types are using Varchar 200 and unlike normal T-SQL where SQL has the ability to ignore uh, the additional space that might have been allocated for a Varchar 200 even if the string itself was maybe only two characters, SSIS doesn't have that luxury so it needs to still allocate the amount of RAM under the assumption that somewhere later on while reading the DTS pipeline a row might appear that actually has 200 characters in it. So now in order to fix this issue what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another data flow task so I'll go ahead and uh, put a data flow task here and I'll choose a source so uh, the source is again uh, this one and I'll open it up and only this time instead of actually using the table as it is I'm going to replace the table with the query and uh, what you'll see in the query is that I've replaced the uh, the data types or I've modified the data types to represent smaller values or data lengths so while earlier all of them were varchar uh, 200 in this case you can see that most of them are varchar 20 or varchar 10 and then I've got the columns here so the next is obviously to go ahead and uh, create the cache transform so I'll go ahead and uh, connect the output from the source to the cache transform over here and uh, if I click edit and refresh it uh, let's see what happens so I've got my data types here uh, cannot refresh column metadata because the specified file doesn't exist verify the file path so that's okay I'll uh, go ahead and do that and then we've got the mappings over here 
So at this point now, if you look at it, you'll see that uh, what we have is uh, we've got uh, not a table exactly, but actually the query to fetch the data from the table. And then the output is again my cache transform, which is a file uh, called uh, airlines123. So if I go ahead, right click and execute this one now, you'll see that it actually executes and it's fetching the data and this time you'll notice that uh, my CPU utilization is uh, increasing but in addition to that you'll see that I've actually completed the entire operation and I didn't run out of memory uh, like last time so essentially what uh, probably you need to keep in mind when creating SSI packages is uh, the data types play a very important role in terms of uh, the amount of memory that's allocated and therefore uh, it's always critical that you make sure you're using the best possible data type uh, right at the source at the very beginning so that uh, it doesn't uh, trickle downstream as unnecessary space utilized elsewhere so I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and thank you for watching